Hey, do you want to hear something crazy? That I just, like, woke up. well, technically I woke up because it was just, like, my brain went off. And it was just like, oh my god, I can pay my bills because my paycheck just came in. So now I got, like, $20. And I'm really proud that I still have $20. It's just like, yes. I can get something I don't fucking need, like McDonald's and shit. Spoil myself this month. I'm excited. I'm happy for that shit, too. But listen to, listen to this. Listen to this and tell me if it makes sense. Tell me if it makes sense. She takes care of our family. Look, Willie. This is what we want you to remember. A mother who homeschooled her three children and worked as a traveling nurse believed to have killed the children and then herself. Now her family homeschooled her three children and worked as a traveling nurse believed to have killed the children and then herself. Now and worked as a traveling nurse believed to have killed the children and worked as a traveling her three children and worked as a traveling nurse believed her three children and worked as a traveling nurse. Doesn't it sound weird? She homeschooled her kids and was a traveling nurse. She homeschooled her kids and was a traveling nurse. Let me tell you something. When you are part of staff, 12 and 16 hour shifts are a regular. Why? Because staffing, there's never enough. And for some reason... If you have something like the NCC, um, nobody does the staffing efficient enough for no one to be overwhelmed. Like, honestly, like, when you really look at it, like, staffing always sucks. For some reason, they never adjust. Like, for some reason, everybody on the evening shift always ends up, like, working 16-hour shifts almost every day of their shift. Every shift they work. Well, day shift, they usually get off on time because, you know, night shifts has to show up. And it's, like, it, the money's good. Sometimes you get an extra dollar or two on the hour. Bonuses, benefits for your weariness of your body. But, um, I couldn't imagine being a nurse, a traveling nurse at that, where you sign contracts and agree to, like, working certain hours and certain shifts per contract, having to pay out all of your taxes, um, <clears throat> Your benefits, your payments out of your money, you know, because you get that money outright. It doesn't get taxed. You usually do your own shit when you do contracts and shit done. You pay for your own benefits. You pay everything offhand because you're on contract. Your com your parent company really doesn't do all that for you. You do that yourself. Um, you usually have to, like, go give out the hours, let them know how much, register that shit, and then, like, uh, that's usually how you get your payment, right? I was never a uh, traveling nurse. I was always worked for the facility or I was always under a uh, state uh, employment, right? Um, but I can imagine being a nurse, a little less a traveling one, and homeschooling some fucking kids. When would you have the time and energy? Normally, you have to get in at least like 40 hours a week. She would have to do like a full 48 hour shift on the weekends. Just to make up for that under contract. And then you, and like, just two days. And then you would have to come back and take care of your fucking kids. And still have to make fucking breakfast today to stay with somebody on the weekends. And I said with her dad, I don't know. It's just the story's awkward to me. That's all. When does she sleep? ...to have killed the children and then herself. Now her family is searching for answers about exactly... What happened? Good Wednesday afternoon, everyone. I'm Chad Tucker. And I'm Natalie Wilson. Winston-Salem Police this is from yesterday. Old Ethel Steele and her three children dead from gunshot wounds in the family's home on Brook Hill Drive yesterday. The children were 9, 12, and 14 years old. Police are calling this a murder-suicide, and this has been a lot of news for her family to process. Fox 8's Sarah Winkleman joins us live outside of the family's home. And Sarah, you spoke with members of the Steele family today, and they gave you a very clear message. I think, I didn't even notice that. Like, the, like what the fuck? Hold on a second. I want to show you guys. Because that just weirded me the fuck out, and I just now noticed this. So the news reporter's right there. Willie Williams, that's Uncle Willie. Hello, Uncle Willie. It's up to him. He is cool as fuck. He talks about the babies and all that shit. But he lets you know um, when things are a little bit fucky. He might also be a cop or a pimp, but I can't, I honestly can't tell. He's from Florida. It could be either or. It probably is both, honestly. It's probably both. But look in the background. The family was originally, uh, where are we are, 41? Okay. You see these people right here? These are the family members, right? Ah, 
quit that shit. Watch this. A lot of news for her family to process. Watch. Fox 8's Sarah Winkleman Watch. joins us live outside of the family's Look home. Them. And Sarah, you spoke with members of the Steele family today, and they gave you a very clear message. What is that? Is that not fucking weird? They're just walking by still as they're doing this report? Like, they're still there? This is not Ethel. That is the line we heard over and over from family members today as they are just struggling to understand what happened inside of this home you see behind me and why. Now, when we were speaking to them, Ethel's brother, Damon, said she was... Hold on, I'm just supposed to say that leaned in my back. I'm in my 30s, almost 40, damn it. ...on a FaceTime call with her ex-husband when shot for fire. Medical? The children's father what the, the fuck is that? Police. The mom and his father and Hold on. What the fuck was that? Okay, maybe I should have said anything. Look at what is what is a mobile command vehicle? I have no idea where this is. Winston Salem. I have no idea. What the fuck is a mobile command vehicle? Anyone know what that is? Because I'm ignorant on that. Is it supposed to be like a fire truck? The lights are on the side, but it's got police lights. There's a cop right there. There's a cop there too, right here. That might be one there as well. What the fuck is this? What is that? What are those? That's what I want to know. Was the children's father and the one who called the police? The mom and her three kids lived house. in his home on Brook Hill Drive for about. Isn't it? What, look at that house. Look at that house. On a traveling nurse's paycheck at that three years it was also where she homeschooled the children every day but today the home is filled with family all members cars. who come from all across the country as they try to wrap their heads around this terrible news yeah 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 like what did the children do oh my god Willie. this was not representative <laughs> of the ethel that we know her friends know her teachers know i think it's weird she's holding her phone like she was reading the script like put your goddamn phone down your friend your family member died ma'am she is a woman of high respect. What drove this scene, we don't know. But we ask from the bottom of our hearts, let the police do their jobs. Don't have the rumors going. If you what the fuck are you are you wiping sweat off or were, what was that, bro? What do you have around your neck, actually? Because I just now noticed that what do you got? You see me talking to myself. Hmm. Continue. Don't know her, don't make a comment. Whoa, whoa, sugar. What? If you don't know her, don't make a comment. Whoa, whoa. Sugar. That's the mama. Those are the kids. Y'all don't know her, don't make the comment. Oh, oh, this is her. Not bad, sugar, not bad. She got them pies. The family kind of jelly. says they have more questions than answers at this point as they wait for the police to complete their investigation. They say we judge around here, show sure enough too, baby. Mm -hmm. They remember Steele as a caring mother who loved her children and a nurse who cared for her patients from the bottom of her heart. Now they always be like caring mothers and caring for the children and love and all that stuff right when they had done just had done killed the ones that they love. Mm -hmm. yeah. Out here today in front <laughs> of the Steel really family home, dick. you can see over by the mailbox a small memorial started with stuffed animals and flowers. But this community and this neighborhood, they want to do more. And coming up at six o'clock on the news here, we will share what we will hear from a neighbor who says that she wants to do some work to prevent future tragedies like this from happening. Like what? Like Winston Salem, sir. So I don't have no respect for the killers. No respect for the killers. Mm -hmm. she, she, she don't want us to say nothing. Okay. So what should we um assume from this, y'all? What 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 should the assumption be? Because we're not supposed to talk about her.
But I'll tell you right now, it just don't make no sense. None of the story makes sense. Unless something happened. Unless something's actually drowned out the soul. Unless, you know, like some, like I, I, I couldn't imagine what would drive someone of sane standing where they made accomplishments for themselves and all sorts of shit. I don't know what could possibly cause somebody to lose their mind and just do all, I have, I have no idea. I have no idea. I don't know what could be put in people to make them, um, do certain things. It's almost like it, it seems to be an echo. You know, everyone's complaining about more violence and all of this, and it's just like, is it really? Is it really what it, that is? It could be. Or it could be what they want us to see. Want us to believe in. Because, you know, if you believe in something, if you're programmed for it, if you have the aptitude for it. You know, it's kind of like that one time when I, uh, what was it? Jaguar Ray, when I was talking about her. And I think I made notice of, um, one of the air, it was when she was at the airport and they were telling her, now you can't, and she was freaking out because they won't let me get that. And at some point, she had recorded some dude. Some DSA worker having a mark on his arm and looked like a tattoo of something um, I would draw as a sigil or at least recognize as a sigil or at least something that looks like the alchemic sigil or even the Masonic sigil. You really can't tell when you're looking at it. It's just like, what the fuck is that? And it's just like, why would they let me see that? And then you got to think about it. It's like, what would even be the significance of me seeing that? Other than to make me aware that, oh, maybe there's something at play here. And someone's telling the truth, or that's part of the fucking game, you know, because if you keep people in a riled fucking session, and if you keep people looking at stuff over and over again, and make them believe that something is actually, it's like the music industry, for an example, right? The music industry is being made to look like there's mnemonic forces in it. It's not that they're actually there. They're being made to look like it because they're feeding off that shit, right? The powers that be or those who are in charge notice that people are getting into that woke shit. How better to keep people talking about the industry by making them all look like they're the devil? So, you know, like, they're flesh and blood and... They could be wheat for fire, too. Some of them don't even know what they're doing. That's that's the crazy thing. They don't know what they're doing. They're just contracted to do whatever um, these companies tell them to do. Pawns, if you will. Um, not because, like, they're actually a uh, part of the program. It's because, like, well, if we watch them enough and see that, like, it looks like they're part of the program, well, we're feeding into a monster that needs to be fed. We keep these things alive by believing in them. You know, like a fairy, if you want a fairy to live, you gotta clap. <clears throat> it's not the fact that, like, um, you believe clapping will help the fairy. It's the fact that you exercise the actual action of clapping to keep the fairy alive. That's enough for belief. You followed a command. You obey. And that's kind of like believing in something, too. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.